Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. It is Saturday morning, and you know it's a special day when I actually interview someone on Saturday because I usually don't do this. Let's welcome Mindy to the show. How you doing, Mindy? I'm good. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, Saturdays are special because I do uh, expert series Sundays through Fridays, and I usually keep Saturday for live streams. But uh, your story is so amazing, Mindy. I, I we just we just had to do it today. So. Uh, what, what I yeah. noticed is you were financially free at 37. That's correct. You paid off $165,000 in debt along the way. You've done seven Burr projects. You have a couple of Airbnbs and you've done a flip. So, man, I'm not even sure where to start. Where, where, <laughs> where do you want to start? You want to introduce yourself first, where you're at, what you do, all of that. Yeah, it's usually um, most people like have like one thing they stick to and I'm kind of all over the place. And <laughs> yeah. uh, I know that about myself. But yeah, I'll just give a little background. Um, you know, I spent a good almost two decades in the insurance industry, um, kind of climbing that corporate ladder and um, in the process, quite a bit of debt, a <laughs> lot of student loans, sure. um, you know, nice cars, keeping up with the Joneses kind of stuff. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> in there, a couple a couple of years ago, I went crazy, as some of my friends said, and I started really like focusing on um, paying off all of the consumer debt. I sold the fancy cars, got two, you know, old junkers that I paid cash for and nice. high mileage that nice. get me around just fine. <laughs> um, and during all of that, I also uh, bought my first rental property. And um, as soon as I bought the first one, I bought three within eight months. Wow. <laughs> and uh, then COVID kind of came around and scared me a little bit. I slowed down for a minute. And then um, actually this year I got laid off from my corporate job, um, which is exciting because I had climbed that corporate ladder and, uh, you know, didn't even really want to be on that ladder. Yeah. So, so it worked out in my favor. And um, I looked at my husband and said, I'm not going back to work for someone ever again. And he said, go build your empire. So <laughs> nice. Very so this nice. year, yeah, I've had kind of a crazy year. Um, I'm also a licensed agent. Okay. And so I not only have I been buying houses for myself, but I've been helping other people start building their wealth um, through real estate and wholesaled a few. I flipped one, Airbnbs. So yeah, I just kind of do a little bit of everything. <laughs> very, very cool. Well, what what market or what state are you in? Uh, so I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, and so nice. all of my properties are um, in the suburbs of Kansas City. So okay. within like a 15 minute radius of downtown Kansas City is where all of my stuff is. Nice. Okay. All right. So we're we're gonna peel this back because there's, there's a lot in here that I want to get to. So let's talk about paying off 165k in debt. So um, was there a moment in time that you're like enough's enough? Like I'm going to get crazy to use your words and, and pay this off. Was there an event or a thing or did you just yes. wake up one day? So, so what I was had that? a, I had a big life event actually happen. Um, but to kind of backtrack a little bit more, I actually went through the Dave Ramsey program back in my early twenties and I paid off all my credit card debt. So that okay. was a chunk of it. Um, which that's one thing that I do agree with Dave about is not carrying consumer yeah, debt. For sure. Um, but then I call myself Dave Ramsey dropout <laughs> because I didn't listen to his advice about like paying off debt and waiting to start investing. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyways, yeah, I actually, it was probably about three years ago. I had a good friend of mine in her early thirties who, um, was diagnosed with glioblastoma Oh, and, uh, she had two young kids and, um, she actually, it's a really aggressive tumor and she, she passed away from it. And that event, like it really got me to just like start thinking about like what's important to me, what my values are. And like, I was like, nobody cares what car I'm driving. Nobody cares what clothes I'm wearing. Um, you know, if my hair is fresh dyed or whatever. So yeah. um, that was kind of my big life event. Like I had been slowly, but surely paying stuff off up to that right. point. But that having that happen and my values really change, that's when I was like, okay, I'm getting aggressive and we're getting rid of this and we're going to start focusing on, you know, from debt snowball to wealth snowball. Yeah, that is awesome. Because again, 
you know this having talked to lots of people, but just for the audience, when those things happen in our formative years and we lose a close friend, you know, out of nowhere, right? It's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen two things. One is your situation. It's like, okay, I'm going to control this more. I'm going to do this. But I've also seen the exact opposite. It's like YOLO, only (laughs) live once, go to Vegas every month until I'm, you know, an alcoholic or whatever it is. Right. Um, Yeah, that's, don't do that, folks. It's, that's, 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 that's a bad ending. That does not end. No. (laughs) Yes, very bad. Um, But I, I will say that I've, I've made sure to like, I try my best anyways, to focus on balancing, sure, building my wealth and, you know, spending time with my family, taking trips, taking time off. I, I do struggle with that. I I work a lot. (laughs) As do I, it's, it's really funny though. It's so I, I, similar situation, different era, right. I'm a couple, I'm at least a decade older. Um, you you can, it's amazing how many things you, it's about experiences and memories, not stuff. Yes. If you can just remember that, it's amazing what you can do for free. Oh yeah. And I, I, that's where I always have the most fun. Yeah. The stuff that doesn't cost anything. So very cool. So uh, everybody will ask. So I will ask, how long did it take you from that moment of thought to paying off a hundred and what is it? 165 K in debt a couple of years, I'm guessing. Yeah. I I would say, like I said, I had kind of been paying it off and, Mm -hmm. you know, putting extra towards it. Um, total is probably more like five years. It didn't happen overnight. Most, most people want to hear that five years is it's like, okay, that's doable. Right. Yes. And I would say like those last, the last year or so I was like really strict about my budget and taking every last penny and like really super focused on it. So I did pay a big chunk of it during that last year. But okay. I also bought rental properties during that time. Yeah, see, that's that's important, right? Because some people get so myopic, and I'll just use Dave Rams, and we brought it up earlier. They're all focused on the debt, and they won't invest. That's, I mean, Dave Ramsey advice, if you're carrying around 18% or 22% on credit cards is awesome. But his advice about investing is dangerous. <laughs> Correct. And I lost, I lost almost a decade of yeah. my very like the years I should have had a higher risk tolerance. Exactly. I lost those years because I was listening, you know, loosely to what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. So now, uh, now you switch it up. Uh, you get your first rental property. I always like asking about the first one. What, 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 what was it? What, how'd you find it? What happened? So yeah, I, uh, I got it off MLS yeah. with my realtor that helped me buy my personal property. And um, I still remember like, we went into the house and I had a contractor friend come over to look at it because we didn't know what we were doing. Like we were in our our heads and like, we were kind of panicking because we were like buying this house. And (laughs) I was like, what do we need to do? And he looked us both in the eyes and was like, put a for rent sign in the front yard. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Get a hammer, put it in the ground. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's that easy. Um, And so of course, you know, the other ones haven't been so turnkey, but that very first one, cool. our tenant moved in and he actually paid the entire year's rent oh, up nice. front. Oh, I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so I took that whole yeah. rent payment and I put that for my down payment on my second one. Oh, um, look at you. just moving, moving money around. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, the first couple I just bought off MLS. And then yeah. um, after that, that's when I started going into like, you know, the off off market market type stuff. And, um, my, my dog's not happy about my neighbor right now. That's okay. Um, I have puppies in my room with me, so I'm a dog guy. No problem. Yeah. My Frenchie's a little crazy. So, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, so yeah, then that's when I started really going and like learning. I didn't know I was doing the burr and all that. I didn't know I was using other people's money. Like I was just getting creative because I didn't have any money. And, um, (laughs) Well, let, well let's, like, so the next one, yeah, let's talk about a burr project, right? Because not all burr projects work. Uh, lots mm-hmm. of people, lots of, you know, lots of people get into burr projects and they don't realize it's the exit, right? The refi out that's actually the most dangerous part because you can get blocked with money in it if you correct. Your numbers are wrong. People do their ARVs wrong because they're looking at purchase versus refinance appraisals. They're different. They don't know that. So. Let's talk about the first burr project. Did did it work out? Did uh, no? It was a major <laughs> flop. Um, <laughs> I want people to hear this because again, it, it sounds great on paper. It sounds yep. great in the books. 
It can be amazing. Infinite return is awesome. Right. It's not as easy as people make it look. That's right. Yeah. And the first one, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I say sometimes like it's my strength that I just jump in and do stuff. Sometimes it's my weakness, yeah. you know? Um, and so this was one of those cases where I just, I kind of overestimated the ARV. I underestimated the rehab budget. Um, I didn't plan for like squatters and someone breaking down my back door and um, the amount of time that it took. And then COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, joy. So, so yeah, I literally like had everything possible. Um, like my, my cash out refi lender actually pulled out, they closed down all of their lending oh, yeah. when COVID hit. And so I had, had to panic and go find another lender. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, I ended up keeping money in that deal, but I'm coming back for it right now. Yeah, because, yeah. So I'm calling it a slow delayed <laughs> burr. Or a two-time burr. <laughs> Correct. Um, so yeah, and I've had the property now for two years. It's one of my you know greatest properties. And I learned a lot, like mm -hmm. I said. Um, that's part of the reason I got my real estate license right. was because I wanted to be able to do a better job on calculating my ARV and pulling mm -hmm. comps. That. Yeah, well, let's, so, let's talk about the money left in the deal because for some people that blows up the deal, right? They end up having to force sell it, right? Yeah. So, so we can use round numbers if you want. So you buy a property for 100, you put 30 in, you were expecting to get a 170 appraisal, which would give you the whole 130. So yeah, I was off about 10 grand okay. and, um, and I tell people like, yes, there's like a clean burr, but to me, even if you're putting, if you're leaving some money in, if it's less than you would have to put down for a down payment, that's still a burr, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, assuming day, you have like, the money, some people are yeah. coming into this with like, they get so every real estate investing is amazing, but it's not as easy as these gurus make it seem. And infinite return sounds good it's marketed it's sexy but some people uh -huh. really don't have it and they go get hard money and then they do this they do that and they come to the end of it they're like i don't have the 10 grand where am i going to yeah. get the 10 grand and then yeah i definitely i definitely think it's important to have um while i do i preach a lot about leveraging other people's money i do still have my own money readily available for situations like that um because it's not if it happens, it's when it's it happens. When, if I, and like, it's most likely going to be in the first couple before you learn your lessons. Because again, you don't know about repairs. You don't know about holding costs. You don't know about the refi. I can't tell people this enough times. A refi of a, or a appraisal of a purchase is different than an appraisal of a refinance. It just is. One is far more conservative than the other. One has a contract between a willing buyer and a willing seller. Right. People just miss that all the time. So, yes, I think it's so important to highlight that because it's so true. And yeah. yeah, when I'm talking to people in their first couple of properties, I'm like, oh, just add 10 grand for like noob, noob. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to tell people again, I think 10 grand is the right number in some cities. Maybe it's 15 or 20. I want, I ask them straight up, what happens if there's 10 grand left in the deal? If the answer is okay, I got it, then proceed. If the answer right. is like, I'd have to sell my car, or I mean, like, you know, do something else, try something else. But, and here's the other thing. So I also talk a lot about diversifying my income in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, like I posted yesterday, my check of wholesaling a deal and I made $9,000. Congrats. Um, so it's like, there's ways if yes. you're in a situation where you want to start doing these burrs and you want to make sure you have that little cushion and you don't have the money, mm -hmm. um, there's ways to go get it. Absolutely. So yeah. you just have to get creative. Yeah, there's uh, real estate investing is amazing. Uh, applications like Instagram, where I found you again. What is your Instagram page for others? We'll hit it again at the end. Yes, yeah, so uh, you can find me on Instagram at investing in your wealth. That is an awesome page. Check it out, folks. She she posts her entire history, experience, all the great stuff. So definitely give that a follow. Um, but yeah, so let's go. So we, so far we've bought a rental. What we paid off debt. We bought a rental. We talked about a burr, a, a two time burr, or a slow burr. Now let's talk about Airbnb. When, when does this Airbnb thing come about? Um, so I'm actually, I'm still new to the Airbnb platform. I actually have like a huge stack of boxes <laughs> over here that, um, cause I'm furnishing it currently. Sure. So they just wrapped up the renovation. So I'm doing Burr B&B. 
Oh, um, <laughs> I've not heard of it. That's pretty. So you, you found a deal, you cleaned it up. Your intent the whole time was to Airbnb it. That's awesome. Okay. Correct. Like yeah. And I have, so I'm doing this one and then I have another one. Um, the tenant will be out in the inherited tenant is mm -hmm. moving out at the end of this month. And I'm going to do that one as an Airbnb cool. as well. So I'm always curious about numbers. What, so let's take this new one that you're, you're, uh, you've got the boxes for. If, you, if, if big underscore, if you were going to do it month to month, what, what, what would the monthly lease be? You think? Um, I think I could probably get around 14 to 1500 for okay. a long-term rent. Yeah. Long-term lease. So, okay. 50. Now you're going to fill it up Airbnb. Are you going to do the nightlies, weeklies, traveling nurses? What's the plan? I'm going to do whatever they want to do, but okay. um, <laughs> I'm using a management company. Sure. And so that's important, I think, because um, when I first heard about Airbnbs, that kind of deterred me because I yeah. thought it was so much work. Mm -hmm. But we have a great short-term rental manager cool. in our Kansas City market that manages quite a few. Um, and so I'm going to rely on him heavily to, you know, price it right and mm -hmm. help me with my occupancy rate because, mm -hmm. you know, of course, like on the peaks on the weekends or um, it's by our our uh, Chiefs and Royals stadiums. Sure. Like course. it's walking distance. So oh, nice. You know, of course, if the Chiefs are playing and someone wants to come see Patrick Mahomes, we're going to have yeah. a higher rate for those nights. Yeah. But then, you know, to keep vacancy low, okay. um, then we'll lower the price for those other nights to try when to get you, people. When you were running the numbers, were you trying to get to double what a monthly or 50% higher? Or I, I actually just had someone ask me this this week that's, analyzing their first Airbnb and they were like, how much would you want versus a, you know, a long-term to a short-term. And to me, like I try to usually get around three to three fifty per door after my expenses okay. for a long-term rental. All right. Um, now on a short term, I want to at least three X that, like I okay. want to see a thousand dollars per month right. coming in and then um, how, after all my expenses. Totally get it. And then, um, no, I, I've never, I never furnished your unit. So I have no idea what it costs to furnish your unit. So is it like, it, I can share grand? that too. <laughs> Eight, um, 10 grand. What does it cost? So this one is a three bed, two bath, and it's around uh, 1200 square feet. <laughs> and so for the total furnishing so far, this doesn't include appliances. Um, I'm at $4,600. Oh, it's not bad. I thought it would but be everyone that. else told me to calculate around ten to twelve thousand for this size. Um, I did get a good deal on a couple, like the couches. I got used. I got a really nice ref refrigerator for two hundred bucks. Like mm. there was a couple areas where I got good deals, mm. um, but that forty six hundred was mainly all off Amazon. Okay. Um, my goal is to like make a spreadsheet that I can share with people that you know shows yeah. what all I got and. Um, and that also doesn't include like my household items. So like coffee, sugar, you know, paper yeah. products, all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to go to Costco and get. Sure. So you'll be um, in seven ish grand. Yeah, I would say around seven. Um, okay. And that also no includes idea. like I got, you know, the keyless entry. That was yeah. something a little bit pricey and then cameras for the exterior. So cool. So yeah, there's, I was actually surprised it ended up being that low. Yeah, that's, I, I would not have guessed that. I would have guessed eight to 10. Yeah, yeah. very cool. And then lastly, I saw that you, you've done a flip. You made 60 grand on a flip. That had to feel good. Yeah, it really did. But I tell everyone I meet, like I'll say it like five times in one conversation. Okay. I am not a flipper. Right. I am not a flipper. Um, I am a firm believer in building your wealth and holding on to it. Mm -hmm. And also, I know that's easier said than done for some people because um, some people need that flip yeah, income sure. to be able to pay their bills and feed their family. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I know that's kind of a privileged statement for me to make. Um, but we live well below our means. Um, mm -hmm. you know, my husband rocks the W2 so that I can build our empire over here nice. and, you know, the combination of being consumer debt free yeah. and living below our means. I don't need that flip money. The only reason I flipped this property is because it was a great deal that came to me. It was off market. The market's hot right now. Um, and the rental numbers didn't make sense and it's yeah. not in a good Airbnb place. Yeah. So yeah, some deals, like, just, well, yeah, some deals are like that. You just got to take what comes across and that's, that's yes. the beauty of being kind of in the business. You can take a lead and process it pretty quickly and, and 
you know, certainly all my intent as one rental at a time is to buy and hold everything, but yes. yeah, something comes across my plate, maybe above the median. It's not quite the rental numbers aren't there, but if somebody's going to hand me a check for 60 grand. I'm not going to turn it down. <laughs> right? I'm, yeah, I'm just saying like, <laughs> that's why I, you know, I flip, I have wholesaled, I will take my real estate commissions to help yeah. other people. It's yeah. like, there's so many different ways. And it just, I kind of let the house tell me yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I to like do it. with it. I like it. So I'm curious as you, you've done amazing things, things that others will love to follow again. Uh, what is your Instagram page? Investing in your wealth. Awesome. So give that a follow. Where do you go from here? Now you're doing this full time. You got your license. Where are we going, man? Mindy? <laughs> Man, I am like, I, this has been the million dollar question for me over the past couple of weeks, as I start thinking about 2022 Yeah. and, um, I'm really trying to get better about just because I can do everything doesn't mean I should mm. do everything. Um, so I'm trying to get better about outsourcing a few areas in okay. my business that I'm currently doing, um, kind of building out my team a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so that I can focus on the things that I really enjoy and I'm good at, you mm -hmm. know, I want to get better at those instead of yeah. wasting my day, you know, doing things that aren't bringing me joy. Very so, cool. so yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, okay. I'll probably, honestly, on my personal portfolio, um, my goal is to buy less, um, but be more intentional okay. with the ones I'm purchasing. Okay. Like so, that. so before I just wanted to get like, you know, this million dollar portfolio, mm -hmm. I'm there. So now right. I'm like, okay, right. I have all these doors open now. I want to start being a little bit more strategic about yeah. what I buy and what I'm doing with it on the back end. I like that. I like that. Uh, I'm curious, you've achieved some amazing things. Uh, have you, uh, just curious, any cool celebrations like, Hey, when we got to this, we did this, we've done this family event as a family, any kind of You've done a lot of amazing stuff. Like oh, what'd you do with 60 you. grand? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a big check to go pick up. Did you go do anything? I did. I did buy, I bought my truck. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. That's good. So yeah, I bought a, you know, 10 year old truck with high mileage that is serving me well now that I'm furnishing an Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. But in the back, let's go. That's right. You got to have yes. that truck. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so yeah, that's, like I said, I'm trying to get better about stopping, pausing, enjoying, yeah. celebrating instead of go, 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 go. Yeah. That's, that was, uh, if you ever read my book, that was the big mistake. Cause we, I was go, go, go for 15 years, got to the end and I didn't have the little memories. I was like, God, I didn't celebrate again. You could have done a bottle of wine or taken a picture or just any of those things. So yeah, don't, don't repeat my mistakes, just a little bit slower and celebrate the victories that you've had. This is pretty amazing. So what kind of advice do you have for folks getting started? Um, a couple of the things that I always tell people is like, one, you got to think outside of the box. Like mm -hmm. real estate is not 20% down mm -hmm. buying one property, you know, paying cash for it. Like old Dave would say, like yeah. start thinking creatively. Like there's always deals out there. There's always money out there for the deals. You just mm -hmm. have to like forget everything you've learned mm -hmm. up to this date. Um, another thing I think is important is just because someone else is doing something doesn't mean you should do it. Um, like because we all one. have different goals and values in life. And, um, you know, those two pieces of advice, advice tie into networking and yes. meeting people and talking and sharing and sh telling your story. Like that's probably the most important thing anyone can do. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've been over here, like just building up my network and in the process, everything else comes with it nice. and it makes it more fun because you have people to talk to. Like my family is like, Oh, she's talking about uh, real, estate. real estate again. Ugh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I need my people yeah. that I can talk to for hours about it. Awesome. Um, and like I said, it's like, I don't want to just build my own wealth. I want to see everyone come with me. Like that's important that's, to me. So, yeah, that's awesome. um, so yeah, I would say getting out there, talking to people, networking, learning what others are doing, learning how they're doing it, what their strategies are. Um, that's one of the biggest things you can do. And of course, educating yourself through, mm -hmm. you know, books and podcasts, 
Very to cool. a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> and gotta, then you need to throw those over here and start taking action. Start to start doing. Yeah. So I have a, a very loyal following and lots of people may be looking to invest in your area. If they wanted to reach out to you as an agent, how do you want them to do that? Yeah. I get people that reach out to me. I have so many different ways, but honestly, Instagram, I'm okay. very active on there and I get a lot of DMs okay. um, about out of, I work with a lot of out of state investors actually yeah. on, you know, helping them manage from finding the deal all the way through whatever their exit strategy is. So Very cool. um, just message me on there. One more time. And that page is investing in your wealth. Thank you, Mindy. This has been so much fun. Congratulations. Amazing story. Thank you for doing this on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I really yeah. enjoyed it.